Um, so the podcast is called Side Gig Central, and it's all about how to start a side gig. It's all about um, kind of a side gig university, if you would, more of uh, educational tools and resources on how to either get started on your side gig and also how to make your side gig more profitable. Awesome. Um, so any tips, what people you know out there working, hustling, I guess, yeah. what can they do to get theirs off the ground? So the biggest question that I get asked is how can I make my side gig more profitable because you're either having a side hobby or you have a side gig, right? So side gig actually generates revenue for you. So when you have a side gig, you really want to look at your expenses. What are you doing to run lean, run as lean as you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. So you're actually gen you know, generating income and generating revenue. So that's one of my, my biggest tips. And actually we, uh, we partnered, we're one of the founding partners of the Side Geek Central podcast is a company called Drive It Away. And Rideshare is such a huge side gig that lots of folks do. And uh, our partner, with, we partner with Drive It Away and they have uh, been able to do uh, car rental with a path to ownership. So it's super important for rideshare drivers to be able to own their car because then going back to what I was saying about expenses, their expenses are gonna be uh, much lower when you actually uh, own your vehicle. So um, it's really super important for whether or not you're doing rideshare, you have an Etsy store, you're starting up a YouTube channel, all of those things, you know, they all have a common thread and that is to run lean and to make sure you're looking at your expenses so that when, you know, the 1099 comes at the end of the year and you have all this additional income, you want to be able to, you know, deduct expenses against, uh, against all that extra revenue that you're generating. What are some of the one and more interesting ones that you've come across so far in your career? Side gig. So I actually, on the podcast, I interviewed a stand-up comedian from LA. Uh, that was a recent episode that we did. That was really interesting, um, kind of the ins and outs of how you get booked on, on different gigs and how you have to you know constantly audition. That was an interesting one. Also, I interviewed a rideshare driver that did 7,000 rides in the city of Philadelphia over a three-year span, so I thought that was very that was very unique. Oh, so what are the signs that like your side gig is going well that you can kind of transition the side gig into a full time? Yeah, that's such a tricky thing. The the transition from side gig to full time gig really has to do with your your revenue, like coming in with uh, potential clients that you can get recurring revenue from, um, and really being able to get those those pieces of the puzzle kind of in line and working for you so that you're not um, constantly looking for where's my next client coming from. So there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of homework involved. That's why I like side gigs so much because I kind of call it like leaping with a parachute. So it's taking a little bit of that risk out of being an entrepreneur and kind of dipping your toe in the water and seeing like, is this actually work that I enjoy? Is this something that I feel like I can sustain? And you know, is it generating enough enough income? Because look, it, you know, it may just be a side hobby. If it ends up being a side hobby, that's okay. It's just knowing the difference between the two, and also like, you know, getting involved with an accountant to help you. Like, look to those professionals that have expertise in in that field um, to help you navigate like what your P and L statement might look like and. You know, is this really a viable um, business opportunity for you? Because sometimes you get so busy, caught up in the day to day of it, like it's exciting, it's my passion project, but at the end of the day, it has to generate revenue, it has to be, you know, profitable for you. I want to take personal training for as an example. And it's actually a personal example of mine because I have done kind of both ends of the spectrum. I started out personal training as a side gig, right? I had a couple of clients. And I was able to scale it up all the way uh, to a business that I had that was uh, for, for 10 years, multiple trainers. So I scaled it all the way up to a full-time gig. And then I got to a point where I scaled it all the way back down to a side gig. So side gig is really the quintessential, like flexible work. <laughs> really, if I can kind of like distill it down into like really, um, 
simple, like simple terms. The side gig is something preferably that you're passionate about and maybe you're dabbling in a new industry. Maybe you're not 100% uh, you know, fully realized in that industry or you're, you're brand new and you're learning. Any popular side gigs that you sh people should consider if they're kind of yep. you know, a little bit more desperate, desperate times and they want yep. to make some money? Yeah, so there's a couple. So I put them in kind of like two different categories. The first is asset-based side gig. And what I mean by that is you have to own an asset to actually either rent it out. So an example of that would be like Airbnb, rent out a room on Airbnb, or Turo, where you, if you have a car that you're not using, it's taking up space in your driveway, you could rent it out on Turo, you could do five, $600 a month in extra cash. Uh, Airbnb, same thing, if you're in the Philadelphia area, you can uh, do, I think it's, between uh, six and eight hundred dollars per month, if you just rent out a single room um, in in your house, so that's an asset-based side gig. If that's not uh, you know something in your wheelhouse, you can also go into what I call a plug-and-play side gig, which is like a ready-made business model that you can just like plug yourself into. Again, it has to do with like uh, what your skill sets are. You could do something like uh, Task Rabbit or Tackle and uh, do any sort of uh, service uh, for, the, for the actual app and the end user. You could take online surveys, which is a very, very easy one. Anybody can do that to generate extra um, cash or extra income. Um, and more of the, the ones that require a little bit more sweat equity, these so, so sweat equity side gigs are more of like building towards a larger, bigger picture. And I think um, those side gigs take a little bit more time. So the more immediately, like I'm strapped for cash, I need to pay this credit card bill or you know, something like rideshare, if you have a car already, um, you know, something like I had mentioned about uh, Tackle or DoorDash or Grubhub, any of those, those are like immediate, you know, cash out same day uh, sort of a gig. Yeah, um, just any other topics that you yeah, um, topics you've covered I, in, yeah, in the podcast? That's like? actually a great question. I, I recently, the episode that launched yesterday on, I, I release episodes every Monday, okay. every Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, you get a notification on your if you have Apple podcast. It's on all your favorite podcast players. Can you say what it was called? It's Sorry. called the Side Geek Central Podcast. Okay, thanks. So recently I had a financial uh, coach and wealth expert on the show and I interviewed him and I said, give me your best tips and tricks for independent contractors. Because that's what you are when you have a side gig. You have all this extra income, all this extra revenue coming your way. How are you going to account for it for your taxes so you don't pass out and faint <laughs> when you get that form 1099? Anybody that's ever done any contract work knows what that's like. Um, so I had him on the show and he offered just amazing advice for like how to get ahead of it, how to you know account for your quarterly taxes. Um, and then also I spoke with um, a woman who has a credit counseling firm that helps people improve their credit score. And I talked to her kind of about demystifying your credit score, like, you know, if you do need to perhaps get financing to buy a vehicle, for example, or you do eventually want to scale up your side gig to something a little bit more substantial, like your credit score is probably going to be looked at. Uh, so I talked to her about some ways to really make sure that you're staying on top of it, the biggest myths that we hear uh, about credit scores. So those are some uh, really interesting topics. And then, like I said, I, I have some fun ones, like I did a one with a stand-up comedian that was a little bit more uh, lighthearted. I've also done, actually yesterday we recorded an episode all about Airbnb and Turo, that was just fresh in my mind, um, all about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Uh, what to expect, how much you actually have to invest in that type of a side gig to actually make it profitable for you. So there is a very diverse, wide range of side gigs out there right now. And I don't, I don't really see it slowing down. I think it's going to just continue to expand.